Hey guys, Pastor Tim here. Hope you're ready to get started. We are on lesson nine of our Bible study series, Avoiding Confusion. And today we're going to talk about the biblical position against racism. Our text verse is going to happen in Acts chapter 15, verse 1 through 5, where we see a incident of prejudice happening in the early church. Verse 1 says, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phenis and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they came to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. And there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Racism and prejudice are nothing new to our culture or our time of history. As we see here in our text, it was even prevalent back in the time of the early church. Now, as Christians, it falls upon us to take a stand against this sin of prejudice, all right? And to understand it counteracts, it is, it is an opposition uh, to our mission as Christians to give the gospel and to reach people of the whole world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We, we understand that Jesus did not select some people to be saved and some people group not to be. No, his his gospel is for all, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. In fact, we see that soon after Christ uh, ascended back into heaven at the, at the sermon at Pentecost, when Peter was preaching, thousands of people from, every, uh, from different cultures and tribes and tongues accepted Christ as their Savior. So we see even in one of the first greatest uh, evangelistic meetings, if you want to call it that, that the gospel is for all people. So if Christ wants to save all people, all right, then we as Christians should stand against anything that would hinder the gospel going, going out to all people. Now, what we want to focus on here in Acts chapter 15 is that, all right, this is an incident where prejudice was prevalent. All right, there was people being saved in the early church who were not Jews, and some of the Jews were having a hard time accepting them as true believers because they still felt like they needed to follow some of the customs they did as Jews. All right, but that's not the case. We see in the Bible, you don't have to add any human work unto salvation. Salvation is a gift of God done by God alone. There's nothing you or I should have to add to it to be truly saved. But because of their prejudice, all right, and some of the uh, things that were already hardwired in their systems because of the culture they grew up in, okay, they saw it fit to add unto the gospel message and tell the Gentiles that they had to be circumcised in order to truly be saved. So first, let's look at the rise of prejudice. The church at Antioch was primarily made up of Gentiles, meaning people who were not Jews, all right? They were a diverse group of people uh, who were all united by the Holy Spirit, all right? Now, this is very reflective of what we see in our churches, especially in America today. It's usually made up of diverse groups of people all right, who are united by the Holy Spirit in worshiping the one true God. Yet back in the first century church, all right, when the, when the apostles were starting the church after Christ ascended back up into heaven, a lot of Bible-believing, you know, Christ-believing Jews were having a struggle in accepting people who were not Jews as part of the, of the church, okay? Because of the culture they grew up in, many of the Jews, because they were God's chosen people, they were the sons of Abraham, had a very hard time accepting the Gentiles at first into the church. All right, so you see this conflict arise first from believing Pharisees. Verse 5, remember, says, But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now, if you recall, the Pharisees caused Jesus Christ a lot of trouble during his earthly ministry. But these are believing Pharisees. These are Pharisees who have accepted Christ as their Savior, but they were still struggling with some of their old cultural beliefs in accepting the Gentiles as well. So they thought, if you recall, being a Pharisee was all about keeping tradition, all about doing 
certain things to be holy and, and, and accepted to God. So they decided to, they, they were bringing some of that baggage with them in their newfound faith in Jesus Christ, thinking there were certain things they had to accomplish and do as well to truly be saved. And they were saying that the Gentiles had to do this as well, specifically the act of circumcision. Now, their prejudice was towards the Gentiles from Antioch. What we're seeing here between the Jews, uh, the believing Jews, the, the Pharisees in this uh, instance, and the Gentiles is, is an example of institutionalized racism. Meaning because of the culture they grew up in, they had instilled in them these beliefs that, you know what, we are better than this group of people. All right. These Jews, the Pharisees, because of what they were teaching and were taught themselves, were seeing that, you know what, we're God's people. We're the sons of Abraham. Why should we be accepting so easily these non-Jews into the faith of Christ? And obviously this was wrong. This was not biblical. All right. Peter himself had some of these same struggles as well, especially when God wanted him to witness unto Cornelius, the Roman centurion. All right. God gave him three times a vision of this tapestry of unclean foods. All right. Remember the Jews in some in uh, their traditions and in their laws had um, very varying things that they were not allowed to eat because it was unclean. All right. They couldn't have bacon, for instance. Ooh, that would be a, str uh, a struggle for me to keep. But three times Christ showed him this vision because he wanted him to go and witness to this Gentile of unclean meats. And, and, and all, every time until the last, Peter was telling him, no, Father, I can't eat that for it is unclean. It is unclean. And God finally told him, hey, don't call unclean what I call clean. All right. Acts 10, 28 shows us the lesson Peter actually learns from this encounter with Jesus Christ and the Roman centurion. And he said unto them, you know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me, referring to his visions he had, but God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Peter came to the understanding that the gospel of Jesus Christ is for all people. All right, and he had to put aside his own personal prejudices all right, in order to witness to all people. Secondly, let's look at the review of the church. And the first thing they realized was that the Gentiles received the Holy Ghost. Acts 11 verse 15 through 17 says this, And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell upon them as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, referring to the Holy Ghost, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? Peter is speaking here, and he's realizing that these Gentile believers received the same Holy Spirit that he himself and other believers received as well, beginning at Pentecost. And he remembers the teaching of Christ and that all those who believe are sealed by the Holy Ghost. So in understanding that, he, he, re, he reasons that, you know what, to fight against these Gentile believers is to, in essence, fight against God. Because who am I to say that what God says is wrong or that we need to add unto it? So Peter decides to put aside his personal uh, prejudices in order to do that which Christ taught, not what man is teaching. All right, the, fair, the believing Pharisees and other Jewish believers, they're struggling with their own human opinions, right? But they needed to understand, like Peter, that God, what God is teaching, is far greater than man's ways. Secondly, the church realized that salvation is by grace alone, not any work we do. Acts 15 verse 11 says, But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Every person that is saved is saved by grace through faith. There's no exception for culture, race, heritage, tall, short, skinny, fat. It doesn't matter, all right? You are saved by grace alone. There's no work that needs to be added unto it like the believing Jews are trying to do at this time. No, it's simply by grace. And the church is understanding if these Gentile believers have believed in the salvation of Jesus Christ, they are saved by grace alone. They're not saved by being circumcised or any other tr Jewish tradition that they see that they need to go through, all right? Man's opinions, once again, is being trumped by the word of God. Lastly, the church saw that, you know what? As believers, there is no difference 
between us. Acts 17 verse 26 says, And hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. We see here in the Bible that God's word teaches, in reality, there's only one race, and that's the human race. We all started from Adam and Eve. And going beyond that, through Christ, we're not only part of the same human race, same physical race, but we're also part of the same uh, spiritual family as well, the family of God. Galatians 3.28 says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. For these reasons, Peter concluded that the Gentile believers should be freely accepted into the church of God. All right, they uh, received the Holy Ghost, they were saved by grace alone, and in reality, there was no difference between them and the Jewish believers as well. Lastly, let's look at the reasoning of James. We saw Peter's reasoning. Let's see what James, the pastor of the church at Jerusalem, has to say. And the first thing he notices is that God is calling a people for his name. Acts 15, verse 13 through 14 says, And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. James gets up there and he, and he, and he backs up Peter's uh, reasoning as well. He says, you guys just heard Peter, one of the disciples of Christ, talk about how Christ told him specifically he's going out into the Gentiles as well to call out a people for his name, all right? Meaning that the gospel is not just for the Jews, it's for the whole world, every tribe, nation, and tongue. And guys, this cannot be accomplished through racism or prejudice. Secondly, James says that God is calling all men. Acts 15, verse 15 through 17 says, And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return, and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles, upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. James is telling the church at this time that God is calling all men. All right? And if God values all men, all nations and tongues and tribes, then why shouldn't we as his church do the same? And lastly, James says, God is calling us to trouble not others. Verse 19 of Acts 15 says, Wherefore my sentence is, that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. James concludes, you know, right after Peter, that, hey, understanding these things, everything that Peter said, that, you know, they received the Holy Ghost, they're saved by grace alone, there's no difference between us. And th then James himself saying, hey, God is calling a people specifically not just among the Jews, but also the Gentiles, but he's also calling all men in the whole world to come unto him. He concludes, leave them alone, all right? If they believed in the gospel of Christ, leave them alone. There's nothing for us to add unto it, all right? And if you have a problem with them being saved, then you need to check your heart and realize your own personal prejudices and racism and lay that aside as well, all right? It's a sin just like any other sin that we need, to, that we need by the grace of God to put aside that we may go forth and serve God to the best of our abilities. In conclusion, you may be thinking, all right, Pastor Tim, that was great, all right? We saw the early church uh, in, in the Bible overcome their own personal prejudice and racism to accept the Gentile believers, all right? But that's the early church, all right? In fact, this is an incident between just believers in the church. But what about today? How do I respond to racism today? And the reason we went through this incident in Acts chapter 15 is because there's a lot of principles that we can glean from it that can help us respond to the racism we see today, whether it be a personal prejudice you may have within yourself, all right, or whether it be something you see in the world around you, what can you do personally to have an impact for God's glory today in a world that may harbor prejudice against other people? Now, the first biblical principle we can glean from our lesson today is that we are all one race. God made us all. We all came from Adam and Eve and because of that, we all stand equal in the eyes of God, all right? Secondly, because we know God made us all, that also means that we are all made in the image of God. We all have an inherent value and worth. And therefore, 
to be prejudiced or to ha harbor racist thoughts against a different people group is in essence to say that God made a mistake in creating those people. If we're all made in the image of God, we all have value in God's eyes. And because we are all of one race, we are all of equal value to God. Thirdly, God is no respecter of persons, meaning God holds no prejudice against any people groups. Right? He makes no exception for culture, uh, country, tall, short, skinny, fat. It doesn't matter. And the reason we know that is because God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for all people. The gospel is for all, as the people in the early church learned in our lesson today. The last biblical principle, all right, and there's many more that we can cover, uh, that the Bible definitely talks about, but I think the last one we'll talk about for this lesson in our response to racism is that God desires that all be saved, all right? We've mentioned many times how the gospel is for the whole world, but the way you can apply that personally in your life is knowing that if I harbor any prejudice or racism towards any person, I'm hindering God's work through me. All right, I cannot go out and reach the world with the gospel if I, in my own fleshly thoughts, hold prejudice against a certain person or a certain group of people. That's all I got for today's lesson, guys. I, I hope you were able to glean from this incident in the early church how we as Christians should respond uh, to prejudice and racism in our world today, and especially those biblical principles we just covered at the end. Uh, I hope you're being faithful in your devotions. I know this video is coming out a little later in the week, all right, but I hope you're able to see it, get the blanks filled out. But I'm, as always, be faithful in your devotions. If you're falling a little bit behind, just catch right back up, guys, and I hope to see you in the next video. God bless.